Most people in Taylor Brorby's North Dakota hometown earn a living by working in the coal mines or in the oil fields. There's no stoplight, there's no grocery store, no motel. There are three churches with full pews on Sundays and a small library with worn copies of Mr. Popper's Penguins and Mary Poppins. For Brorby, who grew up as one of the f uh, few gay children in a class of just 23 students, the library was a treasure trove and a safe haven. The library was the only way he was going to be able to access any book. As an adult facing the betrayal of being outed by an aunt and unsteadiness of a young adulthood, Brorby found himself back in North Dakota teaching English classes at his old high school. The library and books by Amy Tan, by Truman Capote, and Mary Carr were a refuge once again. In his book, Boys and Oil, he writes, quote, every Monday through Friday after school, I walked two blocks from Bismarck High to the public library and stayed there until it closed. Sometimes at the library, I'd leave my carol and dawdle over to the large glass windows. I'd sit down there, mesmerized at the changing light over the Missouri River Valley. The view was an ever-changing canvas of color and texture, something that, though shifting, helped me feel rooted to the reality that somehow I was going to get out of my parents' basement." End quote. Taylor Brorby isn't the first person nor the last to search for help in the pages of a book or safety in the library stacks. But someone heading to their local North Dakota library today, tomorrow, or a year from now will not encounter the same kind of library that Brorby knew. North Dakota's libraries are under attack. Last year, two place, pieces of state legislation took aim squarely at libraries and librarians. The first, House Bill 1205, prohibits public libraries from lending or even possessing, quote, books that contain explicit sexual material, end quote. The bill offers vague clarifications about how to determine appropriate age and maturity or what even constitutes sexual material, yet it's still passed and is now law in North Dakota. This leaves books of all genres, literary merit, and topics vulnerable. Meanwhile, Senate Bill 2306 sought to impose criminal liability on any librarian who displayed these so-called inappropriate books where minors could find them. That bill did not become law. It was vetoed at the last moment by North Dakota's Governor Doug Burgum. But that narrow win is nothing to celebrate. It's just the start of what is to come. The next bill will have tighter language or clearer guidelines or whatever it is needed to pass. And it will pass. Legislation like this has been introduced or has already passed in states like Indiana, Iowa, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Texas, West Virginia, and Wyoming. Whether they were enshrined in law or not, these two bills have already done their job. Libraries across North Dakota are now self-censoring, choosing not to keep books that could leave them vulnerable to threats, angry throngs of parents, or Moms for Liberty members. Two years ago, Brorby went back to North Dakota, this time to speak at the North Dakota Library Association's annual conference. The theme was Libraries, the Place for Everyone. Although Brorby's books have not been banned, his memoir, Boys and Oil, Growing Up Gay in a Fractured Land, is just the kind of literature that could be targeted. It's the kind of book that would make any gay kid from rural America now know that his story is worth telling, that their life is worth living. It's the kind of book that Brorby should have been able to read in his local library all those years ago. Welcome to today's meeting of the Velshi Band Book Club. Let's get started. I'm joined now by Taylor Brorby, assistant professor at the University of Alabama, advocate for access to literature and author of Boys and Oil, Growing Up Gay in a Fractured Land. Taylor, welcome. Thank you for being with us. Great to be with you, Allie. Taylor, I want to start with a quote from your New York Times op-ed called The Real Reason North Dakota is Going After Books and Librarians. Let's be honest, it's not the Venus de Milo these laws are going to come for first. It's books with LGBTQ stories or books by LGBTQ authors, the kind of books that have provided so many queer young people with a lifeline when they needed it most. I don't know where I would have ended up if I couldn't read my way out of despair. My heart breaks to think of all the kids now who won't have that option. Uh, we've talked a lot about the power that books actually have to save a life on, on this show. But as an actual gay man who actually turned to libraries for solace more than once in your life, you have a, a particular perspective on that. They have been the bedrock of what's helped me navigate this complicated world that we're living in currently, Allie, and definitely growing up in a culture where we don't often talk about queer people, queer lives. Books are models for us about who we could be or what lives we could lead. And that's been so important to me, both as a writer and as a young person.
Uh, Taylor, I, I know your book, Boys in Oil, Growing Up Gay in a Fractured Land, hasn't been banned, as I, as I mentioned. I do want to talk a little bit about it, though. You write so vividly about the landscape of North Dakota. I want to read a, a short passage. The prairie I grew up on teaches you to notice, to pay attention, the yoke of the sun as it slides across the dome of the sky, streaking the world orange and indigo, the swish of grass in the afternoon breeze, the screech of a grackle, end quote. Not sure I know what a grackle is. Uh, your internal struggle uh, and, and your longing for a community was, was all the more poignant, juxtaposed, uh, juxtaposed by these descriptions of, of the nature in which you grew up. On a larger scale, though, the book helped illustrate how and why book bans do thrive in, in, in rural and red states like North Dakota. Well, we seem to have a mommy-son issue in the state of North Dakota. We've got the moms for liberty, and we've got the sons of liberty. And these groups are anti-liberty when you look at their practices, sort of led by white nationalists who want us to live in a narrow world. And North Dakota is the testing grounds for the country's worst ideas. It's the least visited state, so it's a perfect landscape to try out these legislative bills. I mean, the Senate bill that failed, Ali, there was language in there about imprisoning librarians. Yep. Thank God the governor vetoed it. One person prevented librarians from being imprisoned in a state in this country. Uh, and, and that's where this starts to get absurd. We've already seen the attacks on teachers. We've seen the attacks on librarians, most of whom study a great deal to, to, to become librarians to, and to understand how to curate for young people. So uh, a young man like you walks into a library, said, I really like this book by Taylor Brorby, and the librarian is then equipped to say, I got something else for you, right? This, this concept of curating for people in need of certain literature has become associated with, with, with grooming and, and, and sexualizing people and making people people gay or, or black or Hispanic or whatever it is that books make you? Yeah. Well, it seems I've been reading a lot of straight literature throughout my life, Ali, and somehow it just hasn't sunk in. You know, if literature had the power to change who you are at base, we would see a lot of confused people in this society, rather than seeing a literature that reflects the diversity of the country that we live in. I mean, let's be honest, this legislation was written by buffoons who didn't pass high school English class. I think the issue there is that a lot of these book bans, and in particular in North Dakota, I read an article about how this went down in the legislature. There's a sort of a shock value to it, right? There's things that one can pull out of context out of your book or any book about almost anything, including Romeo and Juliet, and say, see, it's all perverts. I mean, this is becoming such a boring discussion nationally for me, Alia. I mean, these, these ban attempts are not being written by people who actually read books. If they were, we would see a wider variety of texts being challenged. We see the same passages pulled out time and again. So what doesn't work in Texas will work in Virginia. It's led by a, just a focused, concerted effort by a tiny group of people whose hackles are raised that the world might include people who are different than they are. So I, I agree with you. It's a boring conversation. You read the book and want to debate the book, and maybe there are people who should be debating books. There's no question that books should all be debated and discussed uh, on shows like this, in book clubs, in libraries, in classes, in school. Um, we're, we're trying to take that away without knowledge of what's in the book. So in some places, these bands like we're talking about in North Dakota, I mean, books provide us not only information, but models of how other people have survived, how to help us feel less alone in who we are, or learning about other cultures. I mean, North Dakota doesn't have a world-class symphony orchestra, and growing up, I could at least check out CDs from the library, from some of the world's best orchestras. Libraries and books just offer us so many free resources. And I think that's what's at base here, Ali, for these groups, is that libraries are really the heart of democracy. They are a reflection of the society in which we live. And if we start censoring books, winnowing down the type of texts that are offered to the public that misleads us and is a successful 
path towards fascism, if we're being honest. Taylor, uh, how, how, do, how do those of us who just, again, going back to the idea that it's a boring argument, the only problem is other people are doing it. So how do you fight it? You fight it by raising your voice. We each have a voice, and I've been so grateful to the publications that have allowed me to share mine. People need to be speaking up. They need to be going into their public libraries and demanding much more of their library boards in particular. I mean, a library in Western North Dakota last year wanted to have a pride display during June and was forbade from doing it by the library board. The library board discouraged that same library from celebrating banned book weeks. We need people with moral courage to enter the fight, to run in our local elections, and to say this is enough, enough is enough. And we have on this uh, show featured people, including in Bucks County, uh, Pennsylvania, who have done that. They regular people who have said, I have a voice. I can vote. I can run. I can support candidates. It's, it's uh, great guidance. Tra Taylor, thank you for uh, being with us. We appreciate talking to you. My pleasure, Ali. Thanks so much. And thanks to the newest member of the Velshi Band Book Club, Taylor Broadby, author of Boys and Oil, Growing Up Gay in a Fractured Land.